Did you know that plants can be grown without the use of soil? Now, this is very fascinating because these plants tend to grow well and do better than plants grown with the use of soil. Growing plants without the use of soil is a technique used by modern day farmers to produce different types of crops all year round without being affected by seasons or challenges such as pests, diseases, weather changes, or conditions. This technique is known by few farmers in Africa and these guys are using this technique to produce different crops consistently both in seasons and also out of seasons. In this video, we'll be taking you on a tour on one of these agricultural ventures that makes use of this technique for production here in Western Nigeria. In a recent soilless cultivation is a technique in which we grow plants without soil, employing mineral nutrient solutions. Uh, we choose soilless cultivation because we it, it, it gives us higher yield rather than open feed cultivation. And then there are some specific crop that we cultivate using um, soilless rather than um, normal soil cultivation because those particular crop needs extra care and then that can only be done in a controlled environment like greenhouse. Soilless cultivation as they call it has been in existence for years and here at Fuente Farm this is a major technique used for the production of crops like red bell peppers, yellow bell peppers, habanero peppers and tomatoes. This is a technique that allows the production of such crops all year round without being affected by pests, diseases and weather conditions. Now, one of the benefits is that it conserves water in the sense that you, you are not releasing nutrients indiscriminately. You have a target plant. So the, the, the solution is being targeted to a particular crop at a particular age because as the plant grow as the plant progress then what happens is that you change nutrients so is the solution is being targeted to a specific age particular stage of the plant then two it conserves land it conserves land and then you what that means is that a small area of land can be properly maximized third one Pest control. Pest control is very, very effective, unlike open feed cultivation. Uh, because it's open feed, you have a lot of diseases that you sometimes may not be able to even explain how. But in the control environment, your sanitation is, if your sanitation is optimal, your hygiene, you spray effectively, you can get rid of all the pests that may affect your plant. What are some of the plants that can be planted using soilless cultivation? I guess not all plants can be used in the soilless uh, system. Yes, not all plants. At first, uh, root crops, let me say stem tuber, root tuber, stem tuber like yam, like kukuyam, like potatoes, cannot be grown using soilless. Uh, soilless technique can be used to grow the following crop cucumber, bell pepper, habanero, chili pepper also can also be grown in greenhouse, kale, lettuce, cabbage too can also be grown using um, soilless technique. Um, we have rice sauce mixed with bausha. So, what I mean by bausha is that um burnt rice sauce mixed with rice sauce then we now have um cocoa pit on top there's a cocoa pit on top we have cocoa pit that we sprayed on top the rice sauce and bausha okay. that are well mixed what, what's the essence of the bausha what is the cocoa pit in this uh... The cocoa peat has um, the cocoa peat that we use is buffered cocoa peat. Uh, what I mean by buffered is that it contains micronutrients like manganese, like um, chlorine, and some other um, nutrients. 
that are needed for plant growth at the early stage. So then, the reason why we are using Bausha, burnt rice sauce, to mix it, it together with Bausha is that, so that the rice sauce will not cake. Then we allow um, easy penetration of the plant root into the substrate. So now, together like this, both the Bausha, rice sauce and cocoa peat, they are called substrate. Wow. So, um, another name is um, that we call them is that uh, media, growth media. So, so this this substrate is being watered by. Uh, what are the what is the watering uh, 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 schedule? Uh, schedule. Now we water like it depends on the weather. So in some cases, extreme if you have ash weather, we water like four times in a day, and then sometimes three times. So what? The, what we release is we release nutrients. We don't water with, we don't use ordinary water. We release nutrients every day. And then another thing is that this is, this substrate now, it it does not harbor disease like soil. So we do away with soil because there are some diseases that comes that emanate from the soil itself. That even if been treated, we still after a while we still encounter such problem. So, such problem is being avoided in soilless farming. Since we are avoiding the soil, you are avoiding all the problems associated with the soil. The substrate that I mentioned earlier, this is the fresh start of it. So, this is a mixture of rice oils and bausha, and then these um, cocoa peats as it's being put on top of the substrate. In this greenhouse, Presently, we have um, about 1,700 bags that will be planted soon, as soon as the drip tape is being fixed and every other thing is being done accordingly. The, the, the growth rate is different. Using soilage and you know, you know, you make use of a nutrient solution. And then, as I said earlier, I said the solution is being targeted at the particular stage of the plants and then it's been peculiar to the crop so the growth rate is very rapid than the open food is the produce is better nutritious and then uh more the the the, the nutritional content are optimal compared to that of the open food soilless farming requires huge investment in the sense that you need millions of naira to set up. Yeah. Processing of materials, cocoa peats, rice oils, or any other media that you want to use, your 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 bags, and then even if you want to use trough. So most of these things are expensive, and most of the things they use for soilers are being imported. Some of them are not yeah, some of them are not locally made. Two, it's time consuming. It requires a lot of dedication. And then if someone that owns uh, soilless farming and that does not have the dedicated workers, may end up losing at the end. Because every now and then, every day, they must release nutrients. If a day is a day, if a day is passed and then there's no nobody release anything, nobody no waiting, no releasing of nutrients may end up affect production. Another thing is a threat of system failure. Now, this system depends on the system that uh, one imbibes, in the sense that if you are using a um, drip tape system or you are using any other system, it must be well constructed. In the sense that the situation whereby you a big greenhouse like this and some plants are receiving SX water while some are not receiving enough water or so it's also is also one of the disadvantages. System failure. Yeah, the first thing they should do is um feasibility study. I mean you survey the market, what the market actually demands. Now mostly now because of the um the the profit margin compared to other crops, most people grow BPP 
using soilless technique and they have their optimum yield. So, some for somebody that wants to grow into soilless farming, needs to what to 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 do market survey, what the market actually demands, and then it has to come up with a business plan. And then another thing is that there is a uh, there is also a need for experts, consultants, agronomists. I mean, experienced agronomists, not just somebody that just come up within six months, one year, call himself agronomist that are experienced or capable. So you need a capable hands because the nutrient solution that is being released, the pest control and every other agronomic practices has to be have to be instructed by the agronomist or the consultant in charge. So if the agronomist or the consultant in charge is not well experienced, is not capable. Then, so it is is certain that the business may end up collapsing. And then another thing is funding. Funding, the most because of the huge uh, investment that is being required for soilless farming, the construction, the materials, and every other things that are being uh, needed. So there is a need for investors to come in and invest in the business. Due to its capital intensive nature, this system of agriculture called soilless cultivation is a sure banker for farmers who wants to go into commercial agriculture. Hence, it is not advisable for subsistent farmers. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment your thought and also share this video. Thank you for watching this episode. See you in the next.